metal wings to fly won't take you to the stars. Use the metal for a boat and you won't sail too far. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal pots about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. The secret code, 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 Signs can be tricky, it can overheat your brain. Signs can be hard to chew, each bite can be a pain. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal pots about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. The secret code, A whole island unexplored! Think of the possibilities! And who knew driving was so fun? <laughs> Pin's gonna be furious at us for taking his ship. <laughs> Relax, Chico! He should thank me for making sure everything works! Check it out! We're here! It's Crash Island! You should probably sit, you know. That's not very safe. Your steering is what's not safe. I think of it as artistic flying. Whoa. So, where are we? Holy carrots! An uninhabited island all for us! Okay, we need to be prepared for what we could find in this place. Like dinosaurs or tooth fairies. Maybe I'll find confidence in our life choices. I knew it. We're right back where we started, in a heap of trouble. Not so fast. We only circled the place twice. Those hobgoblins aren't going to be found by giving up. No way! we got to catch them by surprise. I'm telling you, there's nothing around here besides us. Can't you hear how quiet it is? So what? Maybe these dinosaurs have secret powers that keep them silent. We couldn't tell. Yes, we could. Everything makes its own sound. Some as loud as you. Whether we speak, clap, or step, everything we do produces a sound. Sound can even pass through barriers. It can easily go through solid, liquid, or gas. How do you know this stuff? Some of us actually listen to Daco's lectures. Sound is made up of waves that travel through the atmosphere or through a different kind of medium. Tiny particles are moved when the action occurs, producing a wave of vibrations. Particles are needed for sound waves to travel, so we can't hear anything in the vacuum of space because there isn't anything for the sound to travel on. Oh, is that what you mean when you say I'm spaced out? I knew there was a scientific reason I couldn't hear you. Since you were elsewhere, I'll fill you in. Daco also explained that sounds can have different pitches on a scale. High or low? <laughs> I know that one. Bigger people make bigger noises, and smaller people make no, smaller No, it's about ones. wave frequency. A high frequency will make a high-pitched sound, and shorter ones sound deeper. Even though we're the same size, our voices are different, and yours is higher. How can you say we're the same height? I'm not counting your ears or your ego. Hear that? Mm. Look there! Get him! Oh, dude. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's a hobgoblin! Well, how do you know what a hobgoblin looks like? have a very like? scientific imagination! <laughs> These are some super cool wall drawings. That one kind of looks like Barry. So neat. Maybe he'll be nice and, you know, let us escape. He saved us after you went and called him a hobgoblin. Please forgive my friend. <laughs> Don't worry, he's not mad. He just can't understand us. 
I'm Crash, and this is Sidekick. And you are? What's your name? I think he's gesturing something. Like he's telling us his name. I know. Eerie. <laughs> know what? We should probably bring him with us. Pin will be too surprised to be mad. You will go walking with us to go meet all our friends. Understand? <laughs> May I present you all from faraway lands, a hobgoblin. His name is Eerie. But I thought goblins were green. <laughs> Not that I've ever seen one. Ah, uh, pleased to make your acquaintance. Oh, where are my manners? <laughs> Care for a cup of tea? You gotta hear the story of how I found him. We were running and then I got him because I'm so fast. Not how it no, was. here's Eerie how it went. Actually you were making up crazy stories about how you're taller That's than irrelevant. me, which is clearly and wrong. Also, Look at my ears. Go Look at that. It wasn't no, my not idea. True. Hey, wait huh? a sec. That's a computer. It's complicated. It's part of our modern technology. Holy carrots! Just how do you know how to use that? Even I can't figure it out. Hey, I'm talking to you. Hmm? Crash, don't you get it? Eerie doesn't seem to hear us. Yeah, he's doing what I do to Daco. Oh, he's not ignoring you, Crash. He's different. It may be that he's hearing impaired. I don't understand. His ears look like they work okay. Our auditory system, or ears, are far more complicated than they appear. <laughs> Crash, I think you should listen. There's many parts to an ear, internal and external, and they work together. We can see the outer ear, which is made of the auricle and the ear canal. The auricle catches sound waves and sends them to a section called the eardrum. The eardrum is this little membrane it processes the incoming sounds and sends them over to the middle ear. In the middle ear, we've got three bones to help us out. Their nicknames are the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup. From there, sound travels to the inner ear. In there, we meet our ear's most important part, the cochlea. The cochlea is fascinating. That's where sounds get processed. We learn whether they're high or low, soft or loud. It processes the information for our brain. Once it goes to our brain, then we're able to understand it. Without a working cochlea, our brains can't process sound. It really is a vital organ. Oh, well. Hmm. But if he couldn't hear me talk, why didn't he just tell me that? If we aren't able to hear people talking to us, how would we know the sounds needed to respond? It's not something he would know. Our ears are just so complex. Eerie, how did you end up on the island? So he had a family and friends, and he could never understand them? Hey, do you want to go back to being alone over there? But that sounds terrible. Surely we can help him. There's a big world out there of adventures. There has to be something we can do to help. Hmm. Actually, I might know how. Scientists have invented a way to fix a cochlea that isn't working properly. It uses electrical impulses to help stimulate the cochlea. A sound receiver is placed beneath the skin, and a microphone with a speech processor is placed outside the ear. 
When sound comes to the ear, it goes through the microphone receiver and into the electrical implant. Those electrical impulses make their way to the brain. The microphone helps process the sound by teaming up with the speech processor and helping out that cochlea. That way, the brain is able to totally understand what it's hearing. This amazing device is called a cochlear implant. Holy carrots! Let's get him one of these things as soon as we can! Oh, it isn't as simple as putting on a hat crash. It's a real surgery. And it requires rehab and learning how to use it. It can be complicated. Indeed. And it's up to Eerie to decide this. Alone. Then, do you want to go back to your island, or do you want the implant? Then it's a deal! What you doing? Wanna go hear Carlin play the piano? Or hear Wally's poems? Or my personal favorite, listen to nature. That sounds great, but maybe later. Now that I've learned to hear and talk, I want to tell people my story. I can finally tell people about my whole life. <laughs> I want to hear. Me too. Well, first, I'll start off my tale by telling you the ancient lore of the hobgoblins. Oh, my gosh. You mean Crash was right? Kidding. <laughs> there was once a Hungarian-American scientist named Georg von Bekesche who worked with phones. His interest in phones helped fuel his desire to learn about the human ear and how we differentiate high sounds from low sounds. That's how he found out about the cochlea and what it does. He won the Nobel Prize for Medicine in 1961. New Year for grown-ups. Don't forget, a rhyme for Santa Claus. Oh, yeah. For a tangerine and a cookie, it's the same thing every year. Well, of course. Without a rhyme on the stool, New Year's <laughs> is a New Year's. Or oh, the gods of the snowflakes. And do not forget the unique musical compositions. Twelve you have anything more modern or no? These are classics for New Year's. You meant children's beard. classics. My friend on duty. Don't just oh, stand we're all grown up. up. Uh, what what the are you pulling? No huh? <gasps> uh, 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 uh. Beautiful. Now that's what I'm talking about. Perfect. Our sweet little New Year's princess. What are you standing around for? The countdown will be soon, and we haven't even finished the tree yet. My friends. Let's go. Uh, let's hey. go. Yeah, let's go. And don't forget the rhyme so it's learnt by heart. Oh, there'll be no tangerine for you. <laughs> Enough already with this childishness. Rosy, rosy princess. I'm Anna. Just so you know. Enough. I'm done with childhood. Isn't that right? 
right, Snooky. Although, wait. Growing up means growing up. Mountains and three bags of hassle, but all the same come morning time is leaving the old year. And in case we accidentally offend him, behold, he bids farewell, forgetting all already Hello, is the old year. Uh -huh. Nursery rhymes? Really? When you left, you forgot to take me with you. Uh, and I thought, how will you go alone without your guard dog? Then I saw a falling star, uh, and I wanted to be close to you. And my wish came uh, true! Uh, 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 Snooky. Well, I never... Yup, yup! Where are we off to? Well, actually, I'm off to go partying. Oh, we're gonna go play! Oh. Okay, wait. I'm not a little kid anymore. I don't believe in talking toys. It's a new year miracle! We oui, adults call that a hallucination. That's cool, too. Okay, I'm gonna close my eyes and you'll disappear, I should think. Now when I open my eyes and no one will be there. There we go, and no more. Rosa! <gasps> Rosa! Is it supposed to be like that? Whoa! Uh, oh. Oh, God. Uh, uh. Oh, okay, great. I broke my glasses. I chipped a nail. Hey, guard dog. Uh, where are you? <gasps> Snooky, are you, are you all right? You found me! Now it's my turn! Ready? One, two, three, four, five! Now I'll find you! No more games. Now, because of you, I'll be late for my New Year's Eve party. Well, we could just go for a walk, or maybe snowballs, or maybe go sledding. And what else? Huh, actually, that's an idea. What a great idea, Rosa. And I'm not an ordinary dog. I'm a sled dog. Get in! Huh! <laughs> 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 Wow! Oh, that's so cool! <laughs> that's 
almost safe. We'll be there soon. We'll be on time. Up there. We're lost. Don't worry. I'll find the way. I'm not an ordinary dog. I'm a search dog. Dookie! I've nearly got a trail. Rosa! Rosa! Uh, See? I, I told you! Come on! We made it! <laughs> I knew it! I knew we'd do it! What a joy! We did it! Wow! Yeah! I knew it! We made it! Happy New Year, Rosa! And new happiness! Rosa? Are you upset? Because we weren't on time? Because I'm not any kind of grown-up. Grown-up is someone who sets a goal for himself and achieves it. It's best I just get back to read, oh my, nursery rhymes. For me to become a grown-up, it's not enough just to throw out all of my lovely toys. Throw out? Well, what do you mean, throw out? Well, I mean figuratively speaking. So... So you didn't leave me behind by accident? Snooky, no, I didn't mean it like that. I think I know how to help you. I'm not just an ordinary dog. Snooky! My wish! You can take it and use it to get to your party, Rosa! No! Wait! Snooky! Make a wish! Well, I'd never. Rose is back again, and we wouldn't start without you. <laughs> so, how's your grown-up New Year? Just don't say that you're back because you're not yet <laughs> grown up enough yet. That's it. New Year's is the time to fall back into childhood for a short time. Doggo, pick on some classics. <laughs> Certainly. It is impossible to guess and see the flesh when falls a star. The first snow on your cheek, oh well, that's shame, but the snow One request, don't touch the exhibits. This is a unique dinosaur egg which I found on an expedition in Tanzania. While the rest of the pieces in the exhibition allow us to accurately see how our world was in the time of the dinosaurs. Huh, but these are all fakes. Not fakes, just refabrications. Well, if truth be told, all the exhibits are replicas, all except the egg. But how do we know that that's all how it was? Anyone can make up all sorts of dragons. 
but paleontology does not fantasize, it examines. Our dear planet is roughly four and a half billion years old. We can restore the last several thousand years of this cycle thanks to the science of history. According to various sources, from legends and chronicles to the first rock inscriptions, which are more than 40,000 years old. However, this is negligible compared to the rest of the life of the planet. What was before? In general terms, this question is answered by physics and astronomy. But these exact sciences, alas, are not able to tell us about the diversity of living organisms that existed for billions of years before the appearance of a rational man. And here, paleontology comes to our aid. The scientific study of prehistoric organisms. A picture of the ancient world can be traced through fossils and remains that have survived from ancient times to the present day. Thanks to these studies, we know that life appeared on Earth more than three and a half billion years ago. During this time, the journey from tiny microorganisms to amazing giant dinosaurs that existed on the planet for nearly 200 million years has come and gone. I suggest we take a break and have some tea. <gasps> ah, were you scared? <laughs> Keep up, Prickles. The boss is back in town. Everybody's more relaxed here now, I bet, without any dinosaurs. Oh. <laughs> <gasps> uh. <gasps> <laughs> what a funny cutie pie. Who is it? Well, I guess it's you. Stop joking around, Prickles. What, what, where are my claws? And fangs. And where are my scales? I didn't take them. I said, don't touch anything. It wasn't me. It was him. <laughs> but he really was there. And now he's hiding somewhere. Completely alone. He doesn't even have his own name. Listen, you've been driving me crazy with this imaginary friend. Why would you make up someone when you already have me, huh? Peter, what do you think? That's a good name. Well, sit here then, in your chicken shack. <laughs> Righty, and what is this? I found you. But I was never lost. D I thought of a name for you. Peter. Uh-huh, thanks. It just doesn't seem to suit a dinosaur. But you're not really a dinosaur. Get over it, Prickles. It's temporary. It's got to be here somewhere. How to become what you want. But you were only born yesterday. And you already know how to read? We dinosaurs are not quite there yet, all right. Got it? I'm just looking at the pictures. Why would you want to be a dinosaur? You're fine as you are. And what do you know about it? You've seen yourself in a mirror? I have, and I'm okay with it. Oh, don't lie. You've just accepted it. Being them would be cool. Well, could you at least come and meet the others? It's just that nobody believes me. Are you nuts? Like this? Wait till I become a dinosaur. Then they can look all they want. <laughs> Chico, look. Now I've got a new friend. This is Arachne. Arachne, this is Hedgehog. And now, sorry, but me and Arachne are going to go play and do a lot of interesting stuff. But why a chicken? How is some chicken better than a rabbit? I'd understand if it were a dinosaur, but a chicken? Well, if it makes you feel any better, we can say that it's almost the same thing. 
paleontologists have to piece together a picture of the past through tiny details, bone fragments, fossils, and petrified fragments of plants. And only until recently, to get the picture, scientists had to be guided basically by their own imagination. But then, modern methods of study and analysis came to the aid of paleontology. It became possible to accurately determine the age of the samples, find remnants of organic matter and fossils, and even extract DNA fragments in ancient remains. Although previously, it had been believed that DNA cannot survive for more than 600 years. This scientific approach presented many new discoveries in paleontology and dispelled no less errors. So, for example, back in the 20th century, it was thought that velociraptors looked like this. But later studies have shown that these lizards were evolutionarily very close to birds, which means that they probably had feathers. Now, no one is surprised that all modern birds originated from dinosaurs. And the analysis of the genomes of various birds show that the least amount of chromosomal changes in relation to their ancestor was acquired by a chicken. She is actually the closest relative of the dinosaur. So Chico's imaginings are not a fantasy. It's a scientific fact. <laughs> Daco, sorry, but I don't think you'd make much of a shrink. Are you peeking? I found a way. Let's get out of here, Arachli. You're gonna make another mess, and everyone's gonna be sure that I've gone mad. Ah, they all go mad when you see that I pulled off. Come on, come with me. Wait till you see this. Look what I found in the archive of Mr. Hat Rockhead. Just what I need. I can become big and strong like that one-toed thing on the video, like a dinosaur. That requires compliment experiments, and I doubt Docker would agree to it. Huh, what to do? Change the DNA of a carrot? Don't you dare. That was very dangerous. Oh, come on, don't exaggerate. <coughs> Shall we split it? Just imagine, we'll be ginormous reptiles. We'll take over the world. I, I don't want to. <laughs> it's stupid. I'm okay being a hedgehog. Thank you very much. Whatever, Prickles. Suit yourself. But if you change your mind, I'll be easy to find. <laughs> I'll be the massive dinosaur. <laughs> Peter? <laughs> The chicken fly, and chicken steam. The chicken, where are you? Chick, chick, chicken. The chicken fly, and chicken steam. The chicken, chick, 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 chicken. Yes, I want to be the most important. Oh, yes, what? I want to be the strangest, too. Yes, I want to be the unsurpassed. <laughs> and frankly speaking, I want to say, I need a power semolina. I put on a coat with the half a dollar to make it clear to dead and mother. I will be God the dinosaurs of the <laughs> NEC is now knee high for me. Uh oh. Oh no. We didn't agree to that. Something like a real dinosaur. No one knows for sure what a real dinosaur looked like. Docco was saying they even had feathers. Uh, oh, I knew it! Uh, where are you going? You know, 
Dinosaurs are born to conquer the world. And I've already been stuck with you for too long. <laughs> and Peter, that's a good name. Maybe I'll keep it. Now they definitely won't believe me that I didn't make you up. Peter? That's a nice costume. Uh, it's just nonsense. Uh, just in case you wanted to hug your imaginary friend. But he was uh, imaginary. And here I am. Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Uh-huh! Uh, cock a doodle -doo. She appeared again, huh? No, I don't understand. Like flying sharks or some other kind of heebie-jeebie I get. But a monkey? A monkey. What's the difference? <sighs> Here. I recommend reading this before bed so you have normal nightmares and not about weird monkeys. Hm. Kids today. Thanks, but no thanks. I've decided I'm not going to sleep anymore. Will you help? You got it! No sleeping! <sighs> awake, awake, awake! <laughs> nope, uh, not a record! One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two! Left, right, left, right, left, right! Okay, two minute break! I'm no sleep. <laughs> You're being ridiculous. <laughs> no sleep at all? Yeah, what about it? Nothing good <laughs> will come of it. Nobody's exactly sure why nature invented sleep. After all, because of it, we spend a third of our life motionless, helpless and hungry. But it's essential for every living animal. Wow! A third of our life's been sleeping? <laughs> It'd be better if we spent that time doing something more useful. <laughs> well, you can try, of course, but you won't make it too long, I'm afraid, because it's only while we sleep that we get fully fledged rest. It's because of that that the first signs of being tired is drowsiness. I can relax without falling asleep. How about I just sit down and rest a little bit? But it won't work. <laughs> Staying awake too long can become true torture for us. If you overdo it with the insomnia, then you might not wake up at all. Not to mention all the very beneficial and healthy processes other than just rest. For example, lymphocytes become more active, which means our bodies can fight Woo! illnesses better. Our growth hormones also work harder to help us regenerate, which means we truly grow in our sleep. We still have a lot to understand about sleep, but we can state without hesitation that sleep is good. The healthy sleep calms and refreshes us and gives us more strength and energy. Sleeping is living. If it's not possible to avoid your meeting with danger, then that means we need to go on the offensive. Next time you encounter this monkey, make a ferocious face and attack using the fighting style of the attack rabbit.
Chico, what are you looking at? Are you even listening to me? Uh, I can't even control my own dreams. I don't even realize that I'm asleep until I wake up. Hmm, that's a problem. Control your dreams? Ha! Huh, it couldn't be easier. But first, some background information. Sleep consists of several separate stages. The main ones are called NREM and REM sleep. They alternate between themselves approximately five times a night. Enren sits in first as breathing slows down and our pulse decreases. During this stage, dreams are faint and unmemorable. Enrem sleep is divided into four parts. The first two are called surface slow sleep, while the next two are deep slow sleep. To the ordinary observer, there's no visible difference, of course, except perhaps that sleepwalkers may arise during deep NREM sleep. After non-REM sleep, REM sleep begins, and it can last as long as five to ten minutes. We continue sleeping, but our brains start working too. It starts putting away into storage all the information we accumulated throughout the day. REM sleep is further distinguished by the fact that our eyes continue moving, which is what REM sleep is an abbreviation for, rapid eye movement. It's during this phase of sleep that we see the most vivid and memorable dreams. So if you want to try and learn to control your dreams, <laughs> then it would be better to do so during REM sleep. But how can we do this? Yoga and meditation. After half a year's training, you'll be right. <laughs> half a year? Chico! You can stop with the meditation. There's a better way. Wake up, Chico! Look what I dug up in the spheroscope! Managing your sleep is very simple. You just need to understand that you are sleeping. We experience our most vivid dreams during this... What is it called? During REM sleep. Right, that's it. That's when our closed eyes are still moving quickly back and forth. I think there's even a scientific term for it. Sleep beepers. There's no such term. That means I just made it up. Anyway, you need to wear a special device which registers your eyes sleep peeping and then triggers this device to emit a special audio sound. But then I'll wake up. You won't wake up. This is a special signal. You'll hear it in your dream and understand that you're dreaming. All the rest is just mechanics. In short, I made an experimental model just for you. Use it and good luck. So I need to sleep wearing that. Would you prefer meditating for half a year? Don't forget, when you hear the bells, that means you're in a dream. Well, good night. It looks like I'm dreaming. Well, that's it, monkey. Now I'm really angry. <laughs> now we'll see who's who here. You must immediately leave the territory of this dream. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it worked. Oh. 
Oh, it's useless. No matter what I do, she's stronger and trickier. But it's still your dream, which means it's your choice whether to make her more mischievous or friendly. What do you mean? Well, why don't you try befriending the little rascal? Do you want a bauble? Yes. <laughs> Visa? Chico? <laughs> Chico the Hedgehog! <laughs> <laughs> Holy carrots! It's real contact! A meeting of two civilizations! Somebody pinch me! Ay! Nightingale's not singing, and the hippo, he isn't crawling. The alligator isn't hiding, it's also very tiring. Up there, no monkeys about, snakes lie quietly on the ground. The clouds won't rain down, and the sea makes no sound. When the jungle gets too stressed, Tigers don't roar, and the rhino, he just loves to snore. And sleeping's what elephants stand for, not awake anymore. The predators have gone for the day, pleasant sleep and dreams on the way. All the animals want their sleep, that's what they say, that's, that's what, what they, they say. say. When the jungle gets too stressed, all the beasts lie down to rest When the jungle gets too stressed All the beasts Time to rest Lay down to rest ma, 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 ma. And in the new year, we'll have more adventures, more discoveries, more explorations of the unknown, more My pizza. friend, can you stick to why we're here? This tree's heavier than it looks. Get to the point. Skip to the end. Yeah, all right. And so, new adventures call for a new noble furzy vessel presenting... Ta-da! <gasps> Behold! Bayship Mark II. She is five times faster and ten times stronger than the previous version. Is she not wunderbar? Awesome! It's just beautiful! Penguin genius time! But what are those five times faster, ten times stronger claims based on? Don't worry your horned head about that. I just figured out the secret of the universe. And what is the secret? Come on, Pin, spill it! Well, it's quite simple. The secret is symmetry. Right on. I knew it the whole time. Um, what symmetry? Just imagine a forest that reflects in the river. Or a butterfly. Or look at your hands. I get it. Symmetry is when one half of a thing looks like the other half of it. Like a mirror. Not exactly. Symmetry can be different, not just reflective. For example, if we take this snowflake and return it, it will look exactly the same. And this type of symmetry is called radial or rotational symmetry. Symmetry appears throughout the natural world, in the biological world of plants, animals and insects, in mineral and chemical worlds, in weather. Symmetry is all around us. In fact, symmetry permeates the entire known universe. Einstein elevated symmetry to be the primary feature of nature that constrains allowable dynamic laws. Universal symmetry can mean that all points in space are relative, and all directions in space are relative. 
Therefore, the laws of physics apply at any point in space. The beauty of the universe is inherent to its symmetry. I have made this new ship absolutely symmetrical, all the way down to the smallest part, giving it improved aerodynamics and a far better resistance coefficient. Yeah, yeah, enough talk. Let's take this baby for a spin. Where's the door? <sighs> there is one incy wincy issue. This grand new ship is pure perfection. It's unrivaled in its symmetry. So any dissymmetry at all would just throw everything right the heck off. Which is why a vessel of such perfection requires an equally perfect pilot. If the pilot was even an incy bitsy bit asymmetrical, then what? There will be a big asymmetrical bang! <laughs> Pin, my friend, are you saying you're not the perfect pilot? Nine, to my shame, I'm asymmetrical. Hey, not a problem. One of us has got to be a perfect pilot. Mm. 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 <laughs> nine, nine, nine. I never noticed it before. But every one of us is far from perfection. And now, it's all that's on my mind when I look at myself. Life doesn't like strict boundaries. Your symmetry and geometry and stuff. At the end of the day, nobody's flawless. But so what? New adventures still await. And a new year approaches. Now, is that not beautiful, my dear Pin? Doesn't it lift your spirits up? And it's but completely symmetry-free! Totally, maybe, bringing mm -hmm. clear and mostly sunny weather to our region. The area's average temperature is minus 20 degrees Now that is perfection. Flawless, that symmetrical perfection. <laughs> She's the horse of a perfect color. Oh. Behold, perfection itself! I am perfection itself. Yep. Tomorrow the entire universe will open its doors to us. I'm just so excited! I could just kick up my heel gears! Uh, all right. Run around for a little bit then, and I will rest a little bit. And rest is what? Um, well, it's, um, 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 it's kind of like recharging my batteries. I tell you, this will absolutely work. If we can't fly on this perfect ship, we need to make it a little less perfect then. I'm not entirely sure Pin would approve of this idea. Are you kidding me? He'll thank us. <laughs> what the cottontail do we have here? Ikakosha 2.0. I am perfection itself. The ideal robotic pilot for this perfect symmetrical vessel. So are you planning to fly alone? Fly alone. <laughs> See how far I threw that? <laughs> That's like a new world record! It's not a record. Considering the weight of the object and factoring in air resistance, it could be thrown a great deal further. What? All right, why don't you have a go? What would be the point of such an experiment? Um, well, there's not really a point. It's just fun! But fun doesn't make any logical sense. <laughs> Listen to perfection itself. Just admit it, you can't do it. Yes, proving the bunny wrong will be point enough. Can you do this? Hmm? What? <laughs> well,
Well, where's this ideal pilot of yours? Pin, we've all been waiting here in the snow for half an hour. It's New Year's Eve. I need to prepare to get my end of year freak on. Yeah, what he said. Huh. <laughs> uh, it's not in her programming to be late. All of your watches must just be running fast. What's up, gang? Let's <laughs> test fly this baby. All systems are ready. What happened to you last night? <laughs> I discovered having fun and it's just awesome! Happy dang New Year! Everybody, Happy New Year! <laughs> what have you not had done? She can't pilot the ship like this! She's asymmetrical! There would be the Big Bang! Beginning ignition countdown! Five, four... Nine! Not nine, three, two, one... Start! See, it's all good. There wasn't even a baby bang. <laughs> there might have been a bang after all. <laughs> Yo! Yo! Can you hear me? Really? Oh. You're really all right? You just went kabang! Yeah, it banged me all the way into the future. Seems like the universe may not be as symmetrical as thought. And now your perfect spaceship and your perfect pilot are in the year 3013. How can the universe not be symmetrical? There was a time when scientists believed in absolute symmetry and physical laws, but exceptions have been discovered. One of these is the element cobalt. The laws of symmetry say that when an atom disintegrates, the atom's nucleus should radiate electrons in all directions. But the nuclei of cobalt break this rule. That's because they're magnetic, and so they only radiate electrons from their positively charged poles. Unfortunately, this universal asymmetrical law applies to the principles of time travel as well. So I cannot return to your time. Well, you'll be terribly missed. Still, you're safe, and that's what really matters. Safe and very happy. Happy thousand years in the past New Year! <laughs> Yay. Thanks, my friend. <laughs> Happy thousand years in the future, New Year! Happy New Year! <laughs> Happy New Year! The theory of the absolute symmetry of universal law was demolished by two American scientists, Zheng Dao Li and Chen Ning Yang. Their discovery of the infraction of the laws of symmetry in nuclear reactions was honored with the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1957.